Welcome to the Lord's Care Ministry. It's the second day of the week. It happens not to be a work day this day of September 17th, 2012. Today is the Feast of the Lord's Trumpets. And actually what it sets in, we're not talking about things that maybe in the world or above a little bit above the world but high into the heavens where it all starts that's where the lord's laws all start and today is and i'm going to read it here the feast of the lord trumpets prophetic of the future regathering of israel this is a Sabbath, a Holy Day Sabbath. Now, a bunch of you people out here, they have paid no attention to the Lord's Holy Day and the Sabbath that he gives you. But here we're going to be coming up on Halloween, and boy, you're out there buying all the costumes and uh, what have you, getting the bags and telling your children to go out and try to scare somebody tricks or treat. The Lord doesn't like that. He doesn't condone it. But he does say that we should go to the Lord's Feast of Tabernacles, or of Trumpets. Tabernacles come a little bit later. Well, brethren, with that, let's go right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. By the way, I'd like to give a little sermon on the Feast of Trumpets, but we wouldn't have time to do it here not to be able to cover this subject as I would like. So we're going to go into the Lord's Care Ministry, A Year to Search for Knowledge and Truth, Day 262 of the year 2012. Today's study is, Is There Good in Temptations? Question, Is There Good in Temptations? Brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down that would give you so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. Okay, let's get is, is there good in temptations? And we're just going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. The word temptation has come to mean something bad to us today. But we tend to use the word in the wrong way. Temptation itself is not a sin. It is something we are bound to face simply by virtue of being human. Not to be tempted would mean that we were already so shameful that we would be beneath contempt. And many of us suffer from temptations we should never have to suffer, simply because we have refused to allow God to lift us to a higher level where we would face temptations of another kind. A person's inner nature, what he possesses in the inner spiritual part of his being, determines what he is tempted by on the outside. The temptation fits the true nature of the person being tempted and reveals the possibilities of his nature. Every person actually determines or sets the level of his own temptations because temptations will come to him in accordance with the level of his controlling inner nature. Temptation comes to me, suggesting a possible shortcut to the realization of my highest goal. It does not direct me towards what I understand to be evil, but towards what I understand to be good. Temptation is something that confuses me for a while, and I do not know whether something is right or wrong. When I yield to it, I have made lust a God. 
in the temptation itself becomes the proof that it was only my own fear that prevented me from falling into the sin earlier. Temptation is not something we can escape. In fact, it is essential to the well-rounded life of a person. Beware of thinking that you are tempted as no one else. What you go through is the common inheritance of the human race, not something that no one has ever endured. God does not save us from temptations. He sustains us in the midst of them. See Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18 and chapter 4 verses 15 through 16. Let me not be put to shame, O my Lord, but make me love and fear you with all my heart, that I may meet you with a holy confidence and joy. Brethren, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 19, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent, unto the hills around do I lift up. In Psalms chapter 121, verses 1 and 2, I will lift up mine eyes into the hill from whence is coming my help. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the traditions of men. Beware the traditions of men that make void the word of God. As I mentioned, Halloween's coming up. That's a tradition of men that make void the word of God. By making void the word of God, you will never see the kingdom and have eternal salvation. Oh, you say, why well, can repent of that? If you're going to repent, there is a time that's too late. And if you don't get right down and repent now, you don't know what tomorrow brings or if there will be a tomorrow for you. The way life goes, you might be ended now and never have that chance to see the kingdom and have eternal salvation with the Lord. Get out. Get with believers of the Lord and get into the Lord's Feast of Trumpets. That starts the fall holy days. We next have the Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles and the Last Great Day, all prescribed by the Lord in Leviticus 23. Read it. And in Leviticus 23 and about verse 21. You will start reading about the Feast of Trumpets. Brethren, study it. Find a place that follows the Lord's holy days. And you will be on your way. And in the meantime, ask, get down on your knees and ask the Father and the Son to bring their spirit within you to drive away all doubt and drive away all the traditions of men and strengthen your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, while you're on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of that love letter that the Lord has given to you and that love letter is in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to leave for now. And you all have a great day. And I know I will on the Lord's Feast of Trumpets. Bye for now. Email me at 473 at cox.net. Or check into my webpage at www.fcg82.com backslash 
H2 dot HTM. Thank you.